So as I said last time, what we're going to do this video is we are going to create a table of to do and we're going to just insert some data into it and get it all back with connects, which is going to be our, in, in our middleman between our database and our application. And we're going to render it onto the page. It's not going to be too hard, not going to be too long. So I've already got my node been running from the last video. And if you don't have it running, go ahead and run it now. So what we're going to have here is we're going to need a database. Um, we're going to need a database media and I'm going to use connects for this. There's other ones out there. Uh, there's bookshelf, uh, SQLize, there's things like that. But I think connects is a good starting point because it helps you kind of think in SQL. I think ORMs kind of abstract that out. So what we're going to do is we're going to do npm install, dash dash save, connects, and pg. Again, I said that we're going to use Postgres and PG is going to stand for Postgres. Connects, again, is the thing that we're going to use to connect to our database. And we just need these packages. So now that we have those packages installed, we're going to create a new directory. We're going to name it database. We're going to insert a new JavaScript file. And I'm going to name it index.js. And this is going to be our default connection. And we're going to have to export it. So we're going to say const connects is equal to require connects and we're going to do another another uh, open parentheses open JavaScript object and then close parentheses and we're going to have the client is PG so connects w works with MySQL Postgres I'm pretty sure it works with SQLite SQL Server so it's very powerful but for us we're just going to use Postgres we're going to have a connection next and then we are going to have a host of localhost and we're going to have a database of to do db i believe that's what i named it just to make sure i'm going to go look at it so to look at your database you should go to psql backslash l and again it's to do db so now that we have that connects we're just going to export or module.exports is equal to connects so this, is, this should be our simple connection because our connection is going to be on localhost and the database is going to be to do DB. Nothing too special about that. If you hid your um, database behind a password, you're going to need to give your username and your password on this. I didn't, so I don't need it here. But if you do, you're going to need to put that here. So you'll just add something like user, user, and then password, password. Hopefully you didn't name your user user. Uh, hopefully you didn't name your user user and your password password, but to each their own. So now that we have this, we can go back to our index.js. Now we're going to get rid of this app.get because it's considered bad practice to just throw everything in your index.js file. So we're going to add a new directory and we're going to call that routes. And then in that folder, we're going to create a new directory called API. So if we wanted to or we're going to need to create actual things for our front end later that says, hey, when you come to just home slash, this is what we're going to do. But for now, we're going to keep it blank and we're just going to do our API. So for API, we're going to do, we're going to have an index file. And then we're going to also add a, a to-do file. So the way I like to structure projects, and not everyone has to structure their projects this way, is that your main file is going to be your index file, and then any other file you need is going to go into that. So basically the, what it creates is the index is all the files in that folder. So for our database, we only have one file, so it's index.js. But if we were to have like six or seven different connections, let's say we had, you know, three or four Postgres databases and, you know, two or three MySQL databases, well, we would have a file for each one of those, and then we would export them all in the index.js. So that way you can, the reason I like to do that is because whenever you require something, so if I were to say const, require or const db is equal to require and then I want to go get my um, database so let's go here let's go database I don't have to put index.js on the end of that I like the way that looks and I like the way that feels another thing that you can do is in react you know you can do uh, you might not know this but you can do imports it has the new style so you can do import start as thing from you know dot dot whatever whatever it's going to give me syntax errors here because I don't have that high of a JavaScript syntax highlighting for this because it doesn't support it. But 
it's easier to do this and then you can just do like thing.db1 or whatever you what have you so it's kind of nice for just looks so this is the way i like to structure projects again you can structure it however you'd like but this is how i'm going to continue structuring my projects so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our api route and we're just going to do var express is equal to require express and then var router is equal to express dot router now router is the best is the way that express wants you to deal with routes so that's what we're going to do so we're going to do router dot get slash function rec for request res for result and then we're going to close or we're going to add curly bracer for that function and we're just going to do res dot send hello so for this router as you can see it just says get slash the way router works is that you get to append on the front of router whatever you'd like to say that's the the blanket of what we're going to have or what our data or what this route set is going to be on so as we saw earlier on localhost colon 3000 slash it just said hi but with router if we append it to api slash that's what this is going to render so we're going to have api slash but we're also going to want to do to do because that's kind of how it works what you're going to want to do is have an API and this is our to do API. Let's say we were add, add, add uh, let's say we were to add users, that would be slash API slash users Ooh. or something like that. So it's not too difficult to think of how these routes work. So we're going to go to our index and start actually implementing this. Again, we're going to do const express is equal to require express. And then const router is equal to express dot router. And then we're going to do router dot use to do. And then we're going to we're going to need to actually import our to do JS from earlier. So we're going to do module dot exports is equal to router. And then we're going to require that here const to do route is equal to require dot slash to do dot js and then this is going to be the to do route and then we're going to do module dot exports is equal to this router so what we've created here is we've created kind of a hierarchy of routes so this route is exported I'm going to clean up this comment really quickly so we have a router of dot git for just slash and then we send that back up to our API index who says it's mounted on to do. So what this is going to look like for our to do get is going to be again it's going to be localhost 3000 API to do. Not too difficult. So we're going to run this and see what it looks like or actually we need to include this in our um in our index.js. So we're going to say app.use and then we're going to need to do API. Oops, sorry. We need to actually put our single quotes in there or double quotes if that's your thing. And then we're going to want to require our other app into it. So again, this is just putting on the to-do. So if we were to do this without API, it would look like localhost 3000 slash to-do. But we want that to be behind our API route. Again. So we're going to go back to our index. We're going to do API, and we're going to require that. So we're going to do const API route is equal to require dot slash routes slash API, because again, we don't have an index in our routes file. And then we're going to do app.use API route. And I think that'll do it for us. So as you've seen, or actually, as you haven't seen because it's not running we're going to run npm run start or server sorry excuse me now that we've run npm run server you can see we have no compilation errors if we go back here we cannot get slash because we don't have anything mounted on the home directory anymore but if you go to localhost 3000 slash api slash to do 
we have can I get API slash to do. Interesting. Let's poke around to see what our issue is. So after much behind the screen deliberating, because this is a little embarrassing to say. So again, if we go to slash API slash to do, it says cannot get slash API slash to do. Well, the error is you got to put a leading slash here. Look at that, it says hello now. That took me too long to find, I'm not gonna lie to you. Again, that goes to show that even people who have done this before and making videos about it can miss the small things. It's not that big of a deal, but you know, it's a little annoying sometimes. But just struggle through it, and one day you'll just pick it up and still forget the little things. <laughs> but anyway, so now that we've successfully rendered hello onto the screen, what we're going to want to do is we're going to insert some data into our Postgres. So that way we can use our database here and just render the components out under the screen. So first we're going to see if our database is set up correctly. We should actually change these vars to consts because they're not going to change. Not too big of a deal, but it's kind of just convention now that const is a thing. So we're going to use router.get, and then we're going to actually need const db. So you go to require. So we're going to go back to directories, and then we're going to go into database. Again, if it's the index.js file, you don't have to include that. So we're going to do db.select.from. We haven't created the table yet. So yet, we cannot create yet, or it cannot select from the table yet. So we're going to, oh, I don't want to open the Realm browser. We're going to close Nodeman. We're going to stop running our server. I'm going to run a clear so we can get to the top of the terminal. So we're going to do psql. And then we're going to connect to our no or our to do db. So it's backslash c or backslash connect to do db. And now you can see that we're connected to that db. Now, if you want to list all the tables, you can do dl. And as you can see, we have no tables. So we're going to do a create table script. We're going to do create table to do. Now, you don't want to add. You can, but you necessarily don't want to. It's not convention to capitalize table names. And the reason is, is because Postgres requires you to wrap any table names that are case sensitive in double quotes. So if that's what you want to do with all your Whenever you're testing around and making sure your data is in there, feel free. I like to keep it conventional and just keep them all lowercase. So we did create table to do, and we're going to do an ID. Same thing with column names. You don't want to make them capitalized. You just want to make them lowercase. So it's going to be a serial, which means it's going to auto increment as we insert data in. And then we're going to have a title. It's going to be a var car 150. Now you don't have to capitalize var car. It's just habit sometimes. ID title and an is underscore done for a boolean and that'll just say hey this is done or this is not done and that's going to be the end of the table so now if we do dash dl oh sorry not backslash dl it's dt sorry I okay. apologize there was nothing there before this table obviously as you can see we only have one table so backslash dt lists tables so you can see now that we have that table but if we select star from to do, nothing is there. So we want to insert just one record. So we're going to do insert into to do, and we're going to open parentheses, and we're going to do the columns in order. Well, you don't want to insert on the ID column because that's auto incrementing. So we're going to do title, and is done. And we're going to say values. We'll name this title first test, and we'll say is done is going to be false. As you can see, it inserted just fine. So we'll do again, we'll do another select star from to do. And you can see now we get our one first test F. So now we can go back to our code. We can say db.select from to do. And the way connects works is it's just a query builder. So this builds the query for you. This will just create, if we were to dot two string this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna just print out onto the page for us select star from to do and that's it that's all it's going to do but to actually 
execute the query, you just do a dot then. So it's kind of like a promise. And you say function, and then you can name this variable whatever you want. I like to do data. And then we'll do res.send data. So it's pretty simple. So we're going to go back. We're going to get out of our Postgres, and we're going to do npm run server. Nodeman's watching. I'm going to go back to here. We're going to refresh the page, and as you can see, rendered onto the screen. So now we've got that rendered onto the screen. We're going to do a post request to actually put data onto the server, onto our database. So that way we can, you know, get all of our data and put some data up there. Uh, I'll see you guys in a little bit.